filmimizin birinci bölümünde In the first part of this film we spoke of some of the blessings of paradise that almighty God promises his true servants such as the beauties of nature wealth the delights of the mansions of paradise the delicious foods and delightful scents These blessings will of course be far more delightful in paradise than those we perceive in this world. In one hadith, our Prophet, may God bless him and grant him peace, describes the blessings to be enjoyed by the devout servants of Almighty God as There would be bounties which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and no human heart has ever perceived. In our film, we shall be discussing in the light of the hadith of the Prophet and of the verses of the Quran, the kind of moral values that people wishing to be deserving of paradise must possess. After that, we shall be looking at the physical and spiritual characteristics that believers will possess in paradise. Verses in the Quran are about moral values and good manners besides main religious obligations such as prayer and fasting. God commands human beings to live by good moral values themselves and also to counsel others to do the same. In societies that obey the commands of God and in which everyone leaves good lives, a spirit prevails that is similar to that to be found in the life of paradise. Muslims are God's devoted servants. They want to please God in everything they think, say, and do, and they act out of their fear and respect for Him. They never allow themselves to be tempted openly or in secret by any suggestion of Satan. They are pure in mind and conscience, and they go into the hereafter with this clear conscience. In the Quran, God reveals the purity of the Muslim spirit as follows. Gardens of Eden, with rivers flowing under them, remaining in them timelessly forever. That is the reward of those who purify themselves. In many hadith, the Prophet speaks of the noble qualities of those who enter paradise. For example, What are the things that most ensure they enter paradise? Fear of God and noble qualities of character. Our Prophet often reminds us in his hadith that we must be just, merciful, patient, generous, pure, chaste, honorable, and truthful. He also reminds us that in order to attain paradise, we must be benevolent both in private and in public, speak pleasantly, give thanks to God both in poverty and welfare, give almsgiving, seek knowledge, fear God, obey the prophets, refrain from arrogance, maintain dignity in times of need, and not resort to begging or shamelessness, be honest in business, be at peace in God, and be benevolent for the sake of God and the religion. Thank you. 
All those qualities mentioned by the Prophet are required of Muslims who desire to earn the good pleasure and love of God. There are many features that believers will possess in paradise in addition to the moral virtue and blessings they enjoy in this world. One of them is human beauty. It is also one of the greatest delights in this world. God has breathed His Spirit into the human being, and He is of value because of His worship of God, obedience, and character. If perfect physical beauty accompanies these qualities, the blessing becomes complete and is something that everyone can appreciate. Here is a hadith in which human beauty in paradise is described. The maidens of paradise are like ruby and coral. One looks at one maiden's face and sees himself even more clearly than he would in a mirror. And the smallest jewel therein will illuminate the east and the west. The Messenger of God compared the beauty of the maidens of paradise to rubies and beautiful natural things like coral. The beauty of their smooth skin and the brightness of their faces are described as being clearer than when a person looks at himself in the mirror. In this world, the firmness of the skin lasts a very short time. The smooth beauty of young skin ages and becomes worn out and it gains wrinkles from the problems associated with age. Therefore, such beauty in this world is transient. However, God promises those servants who please Him perfect and endless beauty in paradise. The messenger of God said that beauty and youth will continue in paradise. The inhabitants of paradise will be beardless and black-eyed. Their youth will not end, nor will their clothes become old. The people of paradise will enter paradise beardless, with their eyes anointed with coal, aged thirty or thirty-three years. The clothing worn by believers in paradise is also exceedingly beautiful and varied. No matter how fine clothing is in this world, there will always be some imperfection. In time, all clothing becomes old, its colors fade, and the wearer loses the pleasure he had when he first wore it. How much clothing a person has in this world is not important because the pleasure he derives from it is limited by his lifespan, among other things. Like all other things, this too is left behind at the time of death. However, clothing in paradise is flawless in its beauty and variety and lasts forever. 
the many-colored, beautiful clothing in paradise also addresses this taste. Here are some more details about the clothing believers will wear in paradise. There are glorious mansions there, wide rivers, plentiful and ripe fruits, beautiful and captivating women, and much eternal and brightly colored clothing. It is a place of high, beauteous and flawless lands, a place where bright lives are led. In addition, this clothing is so plentiful that nobody will feel any lack or need. This is also noted in a hadith. There exists no one among them who is deprived of anything so as to make him annoyed if the garments another person has. Before he ceases speaking, an even finer raiment will appear upon him. God also reveals in the Qur'an that clothing will be rich and made of silk. They will wear green garments of fine silk and rich brocade. But God will admit those who have faith and do right actions into gardens with rivers flowing under them, where they will be adorned with gold bracelets and pearls, and where their clothing will be of silk. Another of the excellent traits of the people of paradise is the beauty of their voice and speech. Shrill noises, music with static in the background. Noisy surroundings, loud motors, and sirens make our environment uncomfortable. As the Prophet told us, in paradise everyone's voice will be beautiful, and every sound that strikes the ear will be pleasant. And God knows the truth. The beautiful sounds of paradise are described in the Hadith. There are places in paradise where Huri gather. They will raise their voices. Living things will never have heard such a lovely voice before. Everyone who enters paradise will have two Huri at his head and feet, and they will read with loveliest voices ever heard by man or jinn. It is also revealed in the Hadith that the speech of the people of paradise will be very beautiful as well as their voices. There are negative, hurtful, whispering speech that leads to despair and makes people unhappy and sad in the life of this world. God tells us that there will be no such things in paradise. Believers will have delightful conversations with one another in comfortable surroundings. Some hadith also indicate that the sincere conversation that believers have in this world will continue in the hereafter. When the people of paradise settle in paradise, some brothers will wish to see each other. One will go to one side of a couch and the other to the other. When they meet, they will remember and speak together of the things between them in this world. One will say, My brother, do you remember how we prayed to God in such and such a mosque in the world? And God has forgiven us.
Believers will also be far removed from lies and empty negative chatter. In the Quran, God tells us that this will be a wonderful gift for His servants. Where they will hear no prattle and no denial, a recompense from your Lord, a commensurate gift. Nobody in this world can escape death, no matter how attractive, wealthy, or healthy they are. In this world, human life may last six to seven decades on average, which is a very short time. God tells us in the Quran the kinds of things people will say about their earthly lives on the last day. He will say, How many years did you tarry on the earth? They will say, We tarried there for a day or part of a day. Ask those able to count. However, in paradise life is limitless. The believers will be immortal and their blessings eternal. We must consider carefully the idea of eternity about which we speak so easily because it does not refer to a thousand or a million years, but to timelessness. Therefore, people in paradise will not think about time or calculate it as in this world. Life will not end with the passing of years. God revealed this to us in the Quran. As for those who are glad, they will be in the garden, remaining in it timelessly, forever, as long as the heavens and earth endure, except as your Lord wills, an uninterrupted gift. Again in the Quran, God tells us that the service of ageless youths will be one of the blessings enjoyed in paradise. There will circulate among them ageless youths. The Hadith also tell us about the endless life of paradise. If the dwellers in hell were told, you will remain in hell until the stones of the earth are counted, they would be comforted by that. And if the dwellers in paradise were told, you will stay until the stones are counted, they would be saddened. But they would be ordained eternity. He who would get into paradise would be made to enjoy such an everlasting bliss that he would neither become destitute, nor would his clothes wear out, nor his youth would decline. As revealed in the Hadith, people will be permanently young, attractive, healthy, and sturdy in paradise. It is revealed in both the verses of the Quran and also in the Hadith of the Prophet that as a blessing of paradise, youth will last forever. This blessing of paradise is revealed in these words in one verse of the Quran. 
Ageless youths will circulate among them, serving them. Seeing them, you would think them scattered pearls. A hadith says, You will enter paradise with the beauty of Joseph, wearing coal and beardless, and with the love of Jacob, and as young people aged around thirty. The thirties are the best time of life when the personality matures and facial features and the manner of speaking and acting becomes established. As can be seen from this hadith, the people of paradise will be both young and of the same age. The fact that the people of paradise are the same age is a great blessing from God. No matter what age they may be, Muslims should understand one another very well and form friendships with people of any age, older or younger than themselves. Still, the fact that Muslims in paradise are created the same age as one another is another wonderful blessing from God. The Messenger of God said that the age of the people of paradise will never change throughout eternity. Whoever of the people of paradise die, whether while young or old, will be turned into young people of thirty years of age in paradise, never growing older than that, and thus will be the inmates of the fire. Other verses of the Qur'an point out that in paradise the believers' wives will be the same age as them. We have brought maidens into being and made them purest virgins, devoted, passionate, of like age. Another blessing prepared for believers in paradise is that they have everything they desire. Everything in the universe reflects God's infinite power and eternal wisdom. He has created everything in this world as a test, and events in it ordinarily occur according to the laws of cause and effect that human reason can grasp. So when someone sees a fruit, he or she has no doubt that it came from a seed that grew into a tree bush or plant, which in turn yielded the fruit. According to the custom of God in His creation, this is the cause of the fruit in this world. However, it must be remembered that if God wished, He could create the whole universe independent of causes. God has the power to create what He wants, whenever He wants, without depending on any logical pattern and without the need for any substance to create from. People should not be deceived by the fact that in this world everything appears to depend on certain causes and natural laws. As the creator of all causes, God is completely free of them. In paradise, creation will be freed from its need for causes, and so a fruit picked from a tree will immediately be replaced by another without any loss or decrease. God creates both causes and effects. For example, when we look at the shade under a tree, we know it is caused by the angle of the sun's rays. Light and shade are effects of the sun, but God makes the sun the cause of light and shade. This is revealed in the Qur'an. Do you not see how your Lord stretches out shadows? If he had wished, he could have made them stationary. Then we appoint the sun to be the pointer to them. Then we draw them back to ourselves in gradual steps. It is as a result of the artistry of God that everything in this world is created in a seeming cause-effect relationship. He can create anything in a moment and in the form He wants or turn it into any shape He desires. God created the universe from nothing, and at any time He desires, He can dissolve the laws, the causes and effects that we struggle to grasp. 
In paradise, faithful Muslims may ask for anything they think will please them, and as soon as they ask for it, they will have it by God's will. Ordinarily, someone who wants to have a fine meal in this world must do some work for it. The most delightful thing would be to have a meal set before us as soon as it came into our minds and not have to prepare it ourselves. However, such a thing is impossible within the limitations of this world. However, in paradise, the most pleasing blessings are offered to human beings without their having to make a purchase or spend time and effort in the process of preparing them. And God knows the truth. Exalted is he in the Quran, and his messenger tells us that everything the heart desires is possible if God wills. Therefore, a person can enjoy unimaginable things in the next life that are impossible to attain in this world. For example, it is not possible in this world to fly on a horse, but we are told in the Hadith that this is possible in paradise. Some of the examples given in the Hadith on the subject are as follows. A man asked the Prophet, Messenger of God, are there any horses in paradise? He replied, If God makes you enter paradise, if you wish to ride in it on a horse made of red ruby that will fly you wherever you wish, you will do so. At this another man asked, Messenger of God, are there any camels in paradise? But he did not reply as he had to the first man. He said, if God makes you enter paradise, you will find everything yourself desires and that is pleasing to your eye. In another hadith, our prophet says this about the range of blessings in paradise. God said, I have prepared for my pious servants things which have never been seen by an eye or heard by an ear or imagined by a human being. Everything your self desires and that is pleasing to your eye mentioned in the Hadith is not limited by this world's limitations or our imaginations. In the Quran, God calls our attention to the richness of His blessings. You will have there all that yourselves could wish for. You will have there everything you demand. We are also told in the Hadith that as well as obtaining whatever blessings they desire, the people of paradise will be able to change appearance at will. If people were offered the opportunity to choose their facial features and physical characteristics, there is no doubt that most would choose to look flawlessly beautiful. This is because human beings take delight in beauty and always look for perfection. We notice the slightest flaw, but the beauty we seek cannot be found in this world. Even if a person were the most beautiful individual in the world, distress, illness, and most importantly, mortality, casts a shadow over this beauty. It is a part of our test that everything in this world has been created with defects and imperfections. There is a good reason for these to direct us towards the hereafter and make us yearn for paradise, the real place to find the beauty and perfection that delights us. In paradise, God will recreate people with perfect beauty and give them the most pleasing forms. And this beauty will not be limited to one form. 
God will give his servants in paradise the choice of whatever form they desire at any time so that the people of paradise can have a variety of beautiful forms whenever they want. The Prophet tells us that believers can select a form they like from the markets in paradise and assume it. There is in paradise a market wherein there will be no buying and selling, but forms of men and women. So when a man wishes a form, he will enter into it. In paradise, God offers limitless blessings to those of his servants who have pleased him, but above all other blessings is the fact that they have won his favor. They have given their worldly goods to earn his pleasure and dedicated their lives to him. In paradise, they enjoy the pure happiness of having attained their life's goal. In the Quran, God tells us what a great blessing it is to earn his favor. God has promised the men and women of the believers gardens with rivers flowing under them, remaining in them timelessly, forever, and fine dwellings in the gardens of Eden. And God's good pleasure is even greater. That is the great victory. Another verse reveals that believers will enjoy every type of happiness in paradise. Their reward is with their Lord. Gardens of Eden with rivers flowing under them, remaining in them timelessly, forever and ever. God is pleased with them, and they are pleased with Him. That is for those who fear their Lord. In a hadith we are told that the people of paradise are pleased in God's presence. So they will say, At your service and your good pleasure, and all good is in your hands. He will say, Are you pleased? They will say, Why should we not be pleased, Lord, when you have given us that which you have not given any others of your creatures? Besides all the other blessings we have mentioned, the greatest and most important will be the closeness of the people of paradise to God. In many hadith, our prophet gives believers these glad tidings. O Messenger of God, will we see our Lord on the day of rising? He said, Would you doubt about seeing the moon on the night of the full moon, and no screen in between you and it? They said, No, Messenger of God. He said, Would you doubt about seeing the sun, when there are no clouds between you and it? They said, No. He said, In the same way, you will see him.
Of course, all the blessings of paradise are abundant and of great value. There is no place to go in the hereafter other than paradise or the fire. A person who is not accepted into paradise by God will go to the fire. In this world, God alternately shows people good and evil, beauty and ugliness, positive and negative. This is so that the devout can make a comparison and the joy they take in beauty may increase. Some verses in the Quran demonstrate that God shows the people of paradise the state of those in the fire, which may also increase their contentment in paradise and their joy at being saved from the fire, and God knows the truth. The joy the people of paradise feel at having been spared by the mercy of God, the torment of hell is described in another hadith. <laughs> All the people of paradise will see hell and will say, What if God had not guided me? And they will rejoice and give thanks. Another hadith that describes the great mercy and blessings enfolding believers reads, Entering paradise and escaping hell is all blessing. God reveals the joy that the people of paradise experience. They will say, Praise be to God who has guided us to this. We would not have been guided had God not guided us. The messengers of our Lord came with the truth it will be proclaimed to them, This is your garden which you have inherited for what you did. The immaculate nature and flawlessness of paradise is a beauty that people spend their lives in this world seeking but never find. In addition to all these blessings, it is therefore a great blessing to long for paradise in this world and feel the hope of being worthy of it and to experience the joy of our Lord's promise of paradise. What we have discussed here is not, of course, the sum total of the joys believers will experience in paradise. God will give believers the finest reward in paradise for all their deeds. In the Quran, God tells us that the people of paradise live there in continual thankfulness and happiness. They will say, Praise be to God, who has fulfilled his promise to us, and made us inheritors of this land, letting us settle in the garden wherever we want. How excellent is the wage of those who work!